B1 brothers and sisters, welcome to Black Logic. Now, when we talk about today's discussion, we have to understand that Mayor Johnson of Chicago and the issues that survive his mayorship, we have to really define how he is denying black voters, the black constituents, the black people who put him in office, the very right and resources that he has given to illegal immigrants or undocumented uh, migrants, or however they want to label these people. I even heard the terminology undocumented Americans. I don't know how you can be an undocumented American when you're not American. It's like me going to Mexico or Jamaica or, or any other country or Italy. It doesn't matter. And I'm an undocumented Italian. I'm not. You are what you are from the country in which you was born and bred. See, this involves Mayor Johnson's unfair treatment towards black residents of his city. Specifically, when it comes to denying them the same benefit and resources freely given to illegal immigrants. And there's all these benefits and resources they're receiving over their residents there in Chicago. There are numerous of programs, laws, and legislation in place that provide support and assistance to immigrants, both at the state and federal level. However, these very same benefits are not offered to the resident of Chicago. See, and that's what we have to understand here because both at the state and federal level, these very same benefits are often denied to our fellow black people, to the fellow black citizens of this nation. So when we take a look at this, let's really dive into um, some examples and facts, right? Did you know that the state government of Illinois grants financial aid for higher education to undocumented students. Did you guys know that? They can receive scholarships, grants, and assistance while pursuing their educational dreams over the black constituents and citizens of Chicago. Those foundational black Americans who upheld Chicago and who are the backbone of Chicago are now receiving these same benefits. See, many black students struggle to access the same opportunities and find themselves burdened with crushing student loan debt. And what about the failing cities? Well, excuse me, the failing schools within Chicago. What about that? And when it comes to health care, illegal immigrants can benefit from programs like Medicaid and receive medical service with no hinge, no bearers involved. And on the other hand, many black citizens are left without proper health care coverage, leading to higher rates of preventable illnesses, a lack of access to necessary medical treatments. And there's so much more, family. There's just so much to unpack here because housing assistance is another area where uh, there is discrepancies that are over glaring and not in comparison to the illegal immigrants versus the black citizens of Chicago. Now, you have the so-called undocumented migrants that they can qualify for public housing subsidies while countless black families remain trapped in cycle of poverty with limited affordable housing options and a lot of them are homeless so let's not forget the laws and legislation that protect and support immigrants some cities have adopted as well as chicago right a lot of these sanctuary policies limiting cooperation with federal immigration authorities and aiming to provide a safe haven for those living in the country illegally. So when we look at all these things that I just recently combed through, the benefit and the resources that are freely given to the illegal immigrants is staggering to me. And now those same benefit and resources should be diverted and first freely given to the citizens of Chicago and those who are mostly in need, those foundational black Americans. So those benefit and resources that are freely given to illegal immigrants should be extended to our fellow Americans. And we understand the black population there and how they're hurting. And this is why a lot of them are calling out. So it's time for a change family. It's time for us to start uh, uh, bowing our head and trying to get out the way and don't want to comment and don't want to start no ruckus and start no no it's time to start a riot and I don't mean a violent riot and destroying property I mean a verbal and a constitutional political and a patriotic riot that's what I'm talking about speaking truth to power family so as we dive more into this we're gonna there's a lot to unpack here today there's a lot to unpack family I'm glad that you're here with me and I just believe that 
it's going to be imperative moving forward not just to go along and get along just because there's a black face in the office but before just like always family i know last uh broadcast i missed this but we will give honor and grace to our um black innovators our very black intelligent people who again modernize the world that we live in and this is some of the things that you guys might not have seen and let's just go through this very very quickly we have alexander Mao's elevator i believe it was more likely the elevator doors we have thomas marshall fire extinguisher thomas a keratin the stethoscope lewis latimer don't forget he created the uh i think it was a carpet filament that gave the illumination of the light bulb. So without the filament, you don't have a light. See, here's another thing. A lot of people try to give that to Edison or whoever it was. He was just a businessman. He was not an inventor, okay? He was not an inventor, but Louis Latimer was. And But he got Edison, If I'm, I think it's Thomas Edison, if I'm not mistaken. He got the credit because he was the investor that funded the project, but the inventor was Louis Latimer because you can have the glass ball you can have the glass outer shell, but without the filament, there is no light. The iron ironing board, Sarah Boone, the mailbox, Paul L. Downey, the pencil sharpener, John L. Love, the traffic light, Gerd Morgan, also the gas mask with Gerd Morgan, the blood plasma bag, Charles Drew, and also uh, the blood transfusion. And then the air conditioning unit, Frederick M. Jones, which also did the portable, Frederick, uh, excuse me, the portable air conditioning unit in a truck. So yeah, family, we're going to get into it today. We're going to have a lot of fun. And I think it's imperative that we stay tuned because there's just so much to cover. But I won't be before you long. As that lady was saying, Brandon. Brandon Johnson, 47 years of age. So he's quite young family to be a bootlicking Negro in the position that he's in. I, I don't think he got anything from the mayorship of Larry Lightfoot. <laughs> I don't think he got anything from that particular mayorship when she was in office and the do nothing policies that she had for the black constituents there as well. Now, here are some of the benefits that the illegal immigrants, as well as immigrants, receive from the city of Chicago, which is a well-known sanctuary city that has been giving away the city in a ribbon and a handbasket. Emergency services, okay? All immigrants receive that, all, all of them, all of them. Medical benefits. Immigrants who have applied for asylum are eligible for medical benefits. And here's another trick bag. If you just simply apply, you get medical medical benefits like i'm seeking asylum and family i'm not being divisive i don't have another funny voice i'm just going to stick with that one um i'm seeking asylum for me and my family so they're going to get medical benefits and where do you think the money to pay for these medical benefits are coming from from the constituents from the black voters from the citizens of chicago so in two to three years if taxes don't raise then we really have to start looking through the budget with a fine tooth comb because maybe Chicago is hiding money that we don't know. Or maybe the state of Illinois is hiding funds from the black resident that we don't know. Because there's a lot of middle class, low middle class, middle middle class black folk that live in Chicago. But when you look at the neighborhoods, it's not indicative of the tax dollars that they pay. I just wanted to point that out. Rental assistance. I know the black Chicagoans will love nine thousand dollars in rental insistence over a six month period i know they would i know they would i would i would including assistance with moving in and a starter kit to furnish the apartment lord have mercy lord have mercy family they're giving away it all they're like hey you can have rental assistance i know the black chicago is not getting that welcoming city ordinance the ordinance codifies local policy to help ensure that means reinforce that means back up undocumented residents are not persecuted solely due to their immigration status so we, we know that you're in the country illegally we know that you're trespassing on american soil you but we're not gonna hold you to you we're not gonna hold your feet to the fire we we, we know that you know what you were doing was illegally we understand that uh walls fence gates whatever 
they basically have two primary functions to keep someone in or to keep someone out. That's basically the primary functions, right? Also, it states here, emergency and transitional housing program. This program provides immediate and comprehensive shelter services for those facing homelessness or at a risk of homelessness. So they're getting all of this family. Of course, they're homeless when they come to America because they don't have a home. They don't have anything, right? They may have a couple of family members, but that's essentially all that they had. So they're getting the benefits that the citizens of Chicago should be receiving. And most likely because the homeless rate in the black population nationwide is higher than any other race. So predominantly, the homeless people in Chicago are black. So now the resources that they should have been diverting to those black citizens, they're now given to illegal migrants family. That's what's going on right here. It's not even benign neglect, it's just simply neglect. Good evening, it was only a matter of time. Mayor Johnson and allies who've taken fire for their handling of the migrant crisis, a perceived lack of transparency and bad messaging are pushing back hard, campaign style. It's a favorite for politicians, a way to reach a reliable voting constituency, a bingo game for seniors. Today, someone not on the ballot again for another three years, Mayor Brandon Johnson stopped by. Over these first 10 months, I've had the privilege of serving the greatest city in the world. In brief remarks, Johnson ticked off a list of his accomplishments. The message mirrored this ad placed in the Chicago Sun-Times this past weekend by an unknown group called Southside Chicagoans. They tout progressive legislative victories under the headline, Mayor Brandon Johnson is the people's mayor. People are excited about what we've delivered over the last 10 months, as they should be. A quarter of a billion dollars into the unhoused, $100 million for violence prevention. After months of criticism from the right and left, Johnson holding up his progressive victories may seem like a shift in strategy, but the mayor insists he's not changed messaging. We've been very consistent with our message from the very beginning. When I announced my candidacy over a year ago, I said we were going to eliminate subminimum wage. We did that. I said we're going to pass paid time off. We did that. I said we're going to invest more in, in youth employment. We've done that. I said we're committed to hiring more detectives. We're doing that. Whether it's a shift or not, some say Johnson is just not connecting. Radio talk show host and former candidate for Alderwoman Kimberly Agowen says African Americans are losing patience with Johnson. In a community like ours, um, especially for those of us who've been here our entire lives, we're not satisfied with um, some of the, the trends that we're seeing. I mean, right where we stand, we just had someone murdered right across the street at a convenience store. We had the first murders of the year in our ward. Agowen does point out that Chicago mayors often struggle to communicate with the South and West Sides. There are a lot of people who did put a lot of faith in this administration. There's still time. There's still time. Don't get me wrong. We're only nine months in. But we want to see something happen for our community so that we can remain in our community. Another big test. And yeah, family. So that is what Mayor Johnson is doing with the funds of Chicago. He's basically giving out the city and a hand basket and a bow tie and everything else because while Mayor Johnson parade himself around boasting you know, his commitment to diversity and inclusivity, the harsh reality tells a different story. Because when you listen to these black Chicagoans, they are being denied the same benefits and resources that Mayor John has freely given to illegal immigrants. Because when, let's talk about education, right? Because Johnson loves to tout his support for education, but where's that support for the black students? And we're gonna go over some of these things two and three times, because I think it's important. So. If this illegal immigration crisis continues, okay, if it continues, even with the signing of the bill, it really is not going to matter because if there's no slowdown, if there's no stop, it's coming to a city near you, okay? Because in Chicago, you have crumbling schools, you got children who are left with outdated textbooks, you have overcrowded classrooms, but illegal immigrants will receive free education funded by taxpayers like those Chicagoans there in that city. And what about health care, right? We're going to keep going back to some of these topics because the black folk has been left last there in the city because as Mayor Johnson was going over all his accomplishment, he loves to brag about expanding health care access. But who is benefiting the most? Illegal immigrants. That's who. 
They receive subsidized health care and access to clinics and hospital while black families struggle to afford basic medical services. So let's not forget about, uh, as I said before, the subs uh, subsidizing housing. Because he loves to talk about affordable housing initiatives, but who are these initiatives really helping? Certainly not black families who are being pushed out of their neighborhoods, being pushed out of their community centers due to skyrocketing rent prices and gentrification. And by the way, the illegal immigrants. Okay, by the way, the Ill illegal immigrants, but especially when it comes to those community resources that they were barely getting in the first place. Illegal, illegal immigrants receive housing assistance and support to find affordable housing. I just showed you they received $9,000 over six months. Now, some of you may be wondering, is it illegal for illegal immigrants to receive these benefits? And you'll probably be right because Mary Johnson seem, uh, he really doesn't seem to care about the following law when it comes to pandering for votes. He's already on a campaign trail. He showed up at a uh, civil rights bingo night. <laughs> he showed up at he showed up at a, a civil rights bingo night just to tell those people in their 60s and 70s what he's done for the city so he continued to get their vote. And by the way of Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. And who knows, family, the last video we talked about how is Joe Biden fit to serve? Is he fit to serve the country? And how Kamala Harris may be president. So he's really trying to garnish votes for either Joe Biden or Kamala Harris when it comes to the Democratic ticket. So when we talk about these things family in chicago as well as illinois has been a sanctuary city mayor johnson actions speak louder than his empty words when he goes wherever he goes to speak to his black constituents it doesn't really matter his words are empty because you shown when given the, the, the power of the mayorship when given the power of the office of chicago one of the largest cities in America, one of the most prominent and popular cities in America, you have shown to deny the very resources and benefits to the black Chicagoans that you are not showing that you have given to the illegal immigrants because he claims to be a champion of equality, but his policies and priorities tell a different story. The black citizens of Chicago need to demand accountability and demand the same benefits, demand the same benefits and resources that are freely given to illegal immigrants. And they should be watching Mayor Johnson at every single turn that he makes because he's shown his ass. He's shown that he absolutely will not do nothing for the people who put him in office. That's what I'm seeing, family. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what you guys are saying, but that's what I'm saying. This straight out neglect. Lyndon Johnson is talking about a high stakes meeting on the migrant crisis. He met with Governor Pritzker and Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle yesterday at City Hall to talk about the response. More than 35,000 migrants have arrived in Chicago in the last year and a half. This mission, um, it's going to take all of us. And so um, there is a strong commitment still for the state, the county and the city to continue to challenge the federal government to respond to this international crisis. This morning, the mayor was at BJ's Market at 95th and Stony Island to honor owner John Meyer and the Greater Chicago Food Depository. BJ's is one of 17 small businesses that worked with the Food Depository to provide meals to migrants. It is a model of what we were able to do, not only providing millions of meals for new arrivals, but also reinvesting millions of dollars in small and local black and brown owned businesses. $17 million from the state and private donations paid. I, I don't believe that one bit family. I, I don't believe that one bit because hold on, hold on. I, I don't believe that family because for decades, Chicago neighborhoods have been neglected. We, we know this left to crumble while promises of improvements have fallen on deaf ears. We talk about the infrastructure, forget about it. Jobs, forget about it. They're few and far in between. 
That's why they have a lot of homelessness there in Chicago. Opportunities for growth and development, non-existent. And what does Mary Johnson do? He turns a blind eye. Being concerned while doing nothing substantial to uplift his black communities. See, here's the thing. Have you noticed that a lot of these Democratic uh, political officials, don't matter the capacity or, or office that they hold, you only see them in the black community when they want your vote. That's the only time you see them. So if we talk about the cold hard facts, immigrants in Chicago receive benefits and resources that deny to the very citizens that put him in office. They're giving financial assistance. Okay. They're giving, uh, again, health care. They're even be given driver license, work permits, all the expense of hard work and taxpayers like the Chicagoans there who are working their butts off, who are not what people would like to think, bang, bang, shoot them up, gang affiliated, drill rap music, all those things, all those things. And here's the kicker family. Mary Johnson has actively supported policies and legislation that prioritize illegal immigrants over black Americans. And maybe this is because his city, his state falls in that whole sanctuary city thing that shield illegal immigrants from federal immigration authorities. And, and, and some of these policies offer protection to those who break the law. Remember, uh, I forgot what broadcast, probably uh, maybe about two or three broadcasts ago, I was breaking down basically how uh, crime has risen in America due to illegal immigration, why uh, one side of the House, uh, I think it was the liberals or Democrats, whatever you want to call them, basically saying that there was no significant change in crime. There was no significant change in theft because of illegal immigration, which was false, because I got it right from the Custom and Border Protection Agency website, Okay. So don't have them lie to you there. Don't have you lie. Don't have them lie to you. Because Mayor Johnson, again, he has really got on his podium, right, and created initiatives like the Dreamer Scholarship that has provided financial aid to undocumented students. And the reason why I keep bringing up that, because I want to know if there is a correlation, if there is a comparison with a lot of the black teenage youth in Chicago picking up guns versus picking up books? Do they have enough funding to pay the teachers adequately? Are the schools well-funded? Is the infrastructure of the schools well intact? These are all disparaging things that can happen in a community that, believe it or not, family, the teachers are being overran with overcrowded classrooms. So these are all systemic issues that need to be pointed out. Now you have millions of dollars, millions of dollars for illegal immigration, but you don't have those same millions of dollars to the constituents, to the people, to foundational black Americans. And that is a problem. Because isn't it ironic that Mayor Johnson claims to care about diversity and inclusion? And diversion and inclusion means everybody except black folk. And that's why, have you noticed, people in the black grassroots, people in the black media really hasn't uh, uh, pouted and touted and promoted DEI? Because we understand that it's for everybody else except us. Because we understand people like Mayor Johnson, he blatantly ignores the needs of the black community while showering illegal immigrants with benefits and opportunity. So it's really time for Chicagoans to wake up and demand accountability for their elected officials because they deserve better. Their communities deserve better. And maybe Mayor Johnson, you know, he may have the same fate as Larry Lightfoot because you have a lot of people like him in these Democratic grand cities that really prioritize the needs of Black Americans they prioritize the needs of black Americans, not over anyone else. They put everybody needs above those who need the most help. And that's my problem. That's my problem with people like Mayor Johnson. Because when you really comb through a couple of things here, family, these are some things I, I really want to comb through. Mayor of Challenger Brandon Johnson unveils plan to help migrant refugees and immigrants. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. This is this is utterly important because people really need to see what this mayor is doing. He's picking up right where Larry Lightfoot left off. Now, I want you to listen to what this guy is saying. This is crazy. This is he, this is his, his words. Defying force and seeking to divide blacks and Hispanics. And family, I got a couple of more clips for you guys. And I want you to make your own conclusion of who are defying the forces seeking to divide blacks and Hispanics. This has nothing to do with blacks and Hispanics. See, a lot of times they try to make this so ethnically racial and really I don't know. It's it's hard for me to define it because I'm I'm tr really trying to find the, the right words to explain this. They're trying to make this more racial than illegal. See, no one ever cried about immigrants in the country, did they not? May maybe a couple of white supremacists, but black people never really came out publicly like they are now uh, going against immigration. And the immigration that they're going against is illegal immigration. No one really talks about legal immigration, even though both types of immigration undermines black folk anyway, but it doesn't matter. But we are definitely against illegal immigration, right? And it states here that Mayor Johnson vowed Monday to give immigrants, migrants, and refugees seeking asylum in Chicago a greater voice in their government. What does that mean? A greater voice? Anytime that someone's speaking about a greater voice in government, they're talking about representation. And what is representation? Representation is to have someone, okay, that I guess fits the bill here, immigrant, migrant, refugee, asylum seeker, whatever, to give them a cabinet position. Board of directors, executive board of directors, whatever they have in Chicago when it comes to the city council and all that, to give them a voice. I mean, that's giving a voice to me or they're going to have a public sp spokesperson. I don't know how you can have any of these things when they're illegally in the country. So they're saying immigrants and migrants. I mean, if I move to Chicago, am I a migrant? Okay, I'm just asking. Then it goes on the states here. There's enough for everyone in this city. No one has to lose at the expense of someone else winning. We are disrupting that mindset, Johnson said, referring to historic political tensions between blacks and Hispanic center on the fight for jobs and contracts. Absolutely. Here, and here's another thing. Blacks have really been getting contracts, especially when it comes to construction and all other sorts of like low skill jobs. They haven't even re re been receiving them anyway. So if you allow more illegal immigrants who you think their compadres are going to hire. Who do you think their amigos are going to bring in? And I don't know the French word because don't forget you got Haitians there too. And again, this has nothing to do with Hispanics, okay? But it has everything to do with the illegal immigration and majority of the people who are illegal immigrating and migrating and asylum seeking and economic migrating to America happen to be Hispanic. You see what I'm getting at? Because don't forget, I'm not going to forget about the Chinese. I'm not going to forget about the Indians. I'm not going to forget about the Haitians that come here legally. I'm not because there's a lot of them. The new rise and uptick of illegal immigration are Chinese folk. Okay, let's move down here and I'm going to get through this as, as fast as I can, family, because here's Johnson's plan. Let me blow this up for you guys on your cell phone. Here's Johnson's plan, family. Create a new non-citizen advisory board for Chicago Board of Education. Didn't I tell you? Then I tell you, you know how sometimes you don't even want to just finish. You ever just saw a video or a clip or read an article or a journal or book, whatever, a memoir, a poem, and you just didn't want to finish. It was so despicable and disgusting and evil. Sometimes this country just gets me so freaking mad because family it doesn't matter how great foundational black americans are it doesn't matter what we invent it doesn't matter what we innovate it doesn't matter what we change they still view us the same way and they ensure that they get black puppets to be in place to keep us dumbed down to keep us uh uh numb to whatever is going on in politics and They'll let us know. They'll try to tell us, hey, you don't know much about politics, so let us just handle it. They speak like like we little school age kids, like we're uh, infidels. 
Like we're just politically stupid and politically dumb. That, man, listen, I would love for Malcolm X and Martin Luther King to be here today. I will love Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey to be here today. I will love the, the old Black Panther Party, not the new Black Panther Party, the old Black Panther Party to be here today. I will love for Khalid Muhammad to be here today. I will love for Francis Fress Welsing to be here today. Because I tell you, if anybody speak up, they will. Let's go on. Give migrants, give, give, not apply, give migrants and refugees a real voice in policing, policy, and public safety by appointing non citizen representation. This is what I'm talking about. What, did I tell you this family? Non-citizen representation to the seven member community commission for public safety and accountability. Chicago's Fledging City Police Oversight Commission. Wow. Is that a contradiction or is it just me? They're going to have illegal immigrants on a city board that is part of the police oversight commission. Okay, let me, let me, I'm, can I just read this part one more time? Non-citizen representation to the seven-member community commission for public safety and accountability, Chicago's fledgling civilian police oversight commission. I read it right. Broaden the special status afforded to unhoused Chicago public school students in temporary living situation to include migrant children, making them eligible for benefits such as micro grants and transcript waivers. And family, this is coming from Chicago dot suntimes.com then i always tell you i give you the best websites the best websites that i can find okay family either news government that way i'm not just making it up and going on some 4chan or discord site okay or, or reddit no 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 these coming from actual sources draw up a new city funding formula that accounts for language needs and the needs of migrants and refugee students you know the twist to this family the twist of this is that why aren't they teaching the black Chicago in Spanish? Why aren't they teaching the black Chicago in Spanish, but they're teaching the illegal immigrants English? Yeah, that's a contradiction for you. Protect street vendors in Little Village and Pilsen targeted in recent robberies by expanding access to financing and micro grants and supporting commercial kitchens and worker-led co-ops that give vendors safe and warm places to work. Okay. Turn Lightfoot's lackluster office of New Americas into an office of migrant protection and integration to support migrant families and develop a comprehensive city plan for asylum seekers and new arrivals. So asylum seekers and new arrivals are the same thing. Uh, it's just a lot of, oh my God, a lot of repet repetitive, overshadowing, overbearing verbiage and word salad, but they doubling and tripling and quadrupling down on all of the words that they speaking. So you know, this guy's a boot leaking democratic shield that's in office that are just garnishing vote for himself in the democratic power structure. Lord, in partnership with the city council and community groups, build permanent housing for all unhoused, including asylum seekers. Hold on. Why is this important? Because you keep seeing the word including or and in addition to, they did none of this family for the Chicagoans that already live there. Black, white, indifferent. They they have not done it. They did not do it until now. So all of a sudden there's a crisis and then you have millions of dollars now to include people who are illegally in the country. Build permanent housing for all unhoused, including asylum seekers by raising the real estate transfer tax on high end home sales. Increase dedicated funding to immigrant protection and integration to support immigrants bus to Chicago from Texas and other border states. That funding will be far more than the five million life was fixed 16.4 billion 23 budget. You, you know what I thought about is this, especially this last one here, right? Increase dedicated funding to immigrant protection and integration. 
why are they protecting the citizens of Chicago uh, with violence? Why, why they don't have uh, walking patrols in high crime areas, but at the same time, not brutalizing the black citizens? Because everybody knows this in the black community, and maybe some white people and Asian people don't know this about black folk. Because you guys have the same communities that we have. And let me point this out. Everybody, every race in America, every group in America has a criminal class. That's only 1.5% of the black community. Majority of the black community are in the lower and middle class. Now, of course, we have a high rate of unemployment. We have a high rate of homelessness. Okay, so I'm not really accounting those numbers. Okay, but when we're talking about the violence, they're only taking 1.1.2, 1 1.5% 1 of our community and exploiting that all over news media. And that goes on Fox, that be on CNN, uh, NBC. And that's why you can't really choose sides that way. You can't pick a side because they both part of the white part of the system of white supremacy and they both show black people in negative light but when you start talking about what we have done just like the other day i showed you guys about moses west the guy who made the atmospheric water making machine that grabs moisture out of the air and create potable drinking water he went to jackson mississippi he went to flint michigan and gave them people potable drinking water and then they try to sabotage his machine because here's here's my thing tyrone jerome ray ray all of them they not going out there uh, sabotage no machine unless maybe they thought some copper was in it. But he stated in his news uh, briefing that whoever sabotaged his machine, they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were doing. So they were stating, he was stating earlier in that news report how they're trying to pin black folk and Hispanic folk against each other. No, and I and again, I tell you this, family, I beg to differ because what he's not understanding is no one's pinning those people against each other. The black Chicago is, is now seeing the racism, is now seeing neglect of the Democratic Party by the way of Mayor Johnson and uh, the old Mayor Lightfoot. They're now seeing what's going on. They understand that they don't have any friends. That's why a lot of black people are waking up because they understand they don't have any friends. And shout out goes out to the black media for staying for the past 10 years on this. There's been people in the space talking about this for the past 10 years, but they understood that they have to keep pressure on the political parties because it takes time for people to wake up. Is it, you know, my wife, she's a very, when she's in her coma, she's a very heavy sleeper, right? As she's waking up, then she's a light sleeper. But when she first falls asleep, she'll tell you she's dead to the world. So, family, let's point some things out here. Because as he stated about how people are lying about the, uh, I guess, the conflict and the friction between the two communities. No. It's about these black Chicagoans now speaking out that people have a problem with, as they should. Not have a problem with them speaking out, but have a problem with illegal immigration. It appears to be well underway, and many from coast to coast are finding they don't have the resource to handle all the demand. And that includes right here in Chicago. Casey Cronus continues our team coverage live from the city's South Shore neighborhood. Natalie and Anthony, South Shore neighbors are pushing back against the city's plan to house several hundred migrants at the former and now vacant South Shore High School. They tell us they have now filed a lawsuit against the city in an attempt to halt that plan. Located at 76th and Constance, the city is eyeing the building for another migrant respite site. This as officials have run out of room to house migrant families, many who are still sleeping on the floors of local police stations. If their plan goes through, the school would become a site where migrants could temporarily sleep, eat and shower. But many residents aren't happy about it and made that clear during a meeting last week. And in about 30 minutes, they'll once again gather at the school to protest the city's plans. So I'm trying to figure out when they talking about they're defining these conversations. What was his exact words? Can I go back really quickly, family? Can I go back? Because he stated some stuff right here. He said, define for forces seeking to divide blacks and Hispanics. What is he talking about? What forces? You see, that's a lot of empty talk. 
defying forces seeking to divide. Who? Who? Well, let's see who's who's dividing. Who's the forces who dividing blacks against Hispanic? Let's let's see who these people are. Let's see who these people are. That's what I want to know. Looking at the numbers coming out of City Hall and the state of Illinois, upwards of $150 million roughly for six months. We believe that though that $150 million would have been in some way eligible to come to our communities to help our crime problems, help with our economic problems, help with our housing issues. And as we all are aware, black people are the largest number of homeless in Chicago. So if you're going to help anyone, help the current black homeless first. And many of those residents. And this is exactly what I was talking about, family, early on, because this is what they're not doing. They're just speaking a lot of empty rhetoric about all this stuff. It's, oh my gosh. I, I just can't believe this, that they continue to deny and act like the black people are not speaking out against this very same thing. And to say defying forces are seeking to divide blacks and Hispanics. No, those defying forces are the black citizens against illegal immigration, not Hispanic folk and illegal immigrants. A great majority of them just happen to be Hispanic, but I need to make a very clear line so people don't contort the two because I know how people are. They believe the city has overextended itself and should be putting the tens of millions of dollars earmarked for migrants into Chicago's most vulnerable neighborhoods. But the South side, has been under-resourced, underfunded for years, for decades. We have schools that need to be reopened. We have buildings that are abandoned that need to be business operated. The group says the city has abandoned its Invest Southwest initiative, a Lightfoot era program that was dedicated to reversing decades of disinvestment on Chicago's south and west sides, promising to align more than $2.2 billion through public and private funding. We are taxpayers, we're property owners, our money should go towards fixing our communities. The city has received more than 15,000 migrants since August 2022. We have no more room. Y'all are embarrassing Chicago as a whole. According to analysis by the ABC7 data team, there are more than 20 active migrant shelters across the city, seven located on the south and west sides. Whether it's one shelter or whether it's 10 shelters, we're saying the facilities that are there for us the money needs to be put into those facilities for us. In a statement from the mayor's office about the group's concerns and the status of Invest Southwest, a spokesperson says in part, quote, we are committed to continued investment for all residents, but especially communities on the south and west sides that have long experienced disinvestment. We are the city of Chicago, and our shoulders are big enough to support both new arrivals and those who have long called this city home. Mayor Johnson, the black aldermen, the black alderwomen, in this city, you will stand for the black citizens of Chicago. Now, this and that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about, family. That's what type of people we need out there stumping the ground and speaking truth to power because I know they had enough. Because that that down that south side of Chicago, the west side of Chicago, was already supposed to be rebuilt um, with at least two billion dollars that Lightfoot had put in order proud of Mary Johnson, but they haven't got no renovations. They haven't got no funding for a lot of those closed schools. And this is what I was talking about. Instead of me just running my mouth and talking, I love to show you guys these video clips so you hear from the people who are living there. Because if you can't take my word for it, you can't take the news reporter word for it, then I know you can take the black citizens that live right there in Chicago who is who is being neglected, who's been lied to. And that's the problem that we continue to run into when we elect people simply because of the color of their skin. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to Foundation of Black Americans and cash payment reparations, we don't care if the orange man, the green man, the white man, the black man, the purple man, a uh, UFO landing. I don't care. I don't care. Pay what you owe. No tangibles, no vote. Vote couch 2024 unless tangibles are on the table. Because at the end of the day, we understand that if you don't have money in this country, family, there's no so-called American dream, especially when our dream have been stolen from us 
hundreds of years before we can even accumulate and build to what other people have come to this country and what they have been given. So I'll leave you guys with that. Subscribe to the channel. Share this on your social media. Please give the uh, video a thumbs up. And I thank you guys for joining me here this evening. You guys have a good one. Be one.